Welcome to Lockdown Conservation Science. I'm David Mills and I can be contacted at the email address on screen. Today's video is based on a request from a viewer who asked for a refresher on dilutions. I'm happy to take viewer requests, so please submit them via email. So, quick outline of the video. First, we're going to cover the correct use of measuring cylinders or graduated cylinders, as you may know them. Uh, then we'll look at making small amounts of dilute solutions. This is usually quite difficult, so we'll look at doing this via serial dilution. And then this will be followed by two other examples, one quite simple and one that uses some calculation. So going originally from 30 to 3% and then uh, from 15 to 2%. Ideally, if you're going to be making up solutions accurately, you need a good set of weighing scales, accurate to at least half a gram and probably better to sort of a tenth of a gram. You'd also need some way of accurately measuring volume. Um, the cheapest, reasonably accurate way of doing this is used to use measuring cylinders. Um, but you need to know how to read these to get the best results. So the cylinder here has just been filled to just over 90 millilitres. Zooming in, we can see that the water level is somewhere between 92 and 94, but it depends where you're looking. The dark band above the water is called the meniscus. This is the top surface of the water, and you can see that it's slightly curved. The bottom of the meniscus is on the 92 milliliter marking, and the top is around 93, 94. So which is the correct value? Well, we always read the bottom of the meniscus. The cylinders are calibrated to take into account the small amount of liquid that actually creeps up the side of the cylinder to form the meniscus. So in this case, we would read this as 92 millilitres. If you're trying to be very accurate, you actually have to be careful with any droplets stuck to the glass that are not part of the liquid, in the, the main liquid in the container. If you pour out the liquid these droplets will be included in the total that you pour out but they haven't been included in the volume that you've measured it's less of a problem for example in the case that's on screen now where you've got 92 milliliters and you've actually got some very small droplets that's going to be fairly insignificant but if you're measuring out one or two milliliters and you have droplets at the top that could actually be quite a large percentage error Some treatments and procedures in conservation may require small amounts of very dilute solutions. The common example would be bleaching, but there's other examples, for example, in preparing particular stains for microscope slides. The temptation is always to try to weigh out subgram quantities and dissolve them directly in water or any other solvent as needed. But this often leads to inaccuracies, especially if you don't have particularly accurate weighing scales or a way to actually measure out very small amounts. To make a very dilute solution accurately, the trick is to make a stronger solution and then dilute it, perhaps several times. Of course this only really works if the starting material is cheap enough that you can use a larger amount of it, or if it's stable in solution such that you can keep the stronger solution in stock and prepare working solutions from it. This won't necessarily always be true, in which case you may actually just need to get a more precise set of weighing scales, but these can be more expensive than the chemicals you're using. So it's budget considerations, and I'm not going to go into that further here. So sodium borohydride is used as a weak bleach for reducing textile stains, foxing on paper, that kind of thing. It's often used in concentrations well below 1% weight to volume. If we were treating a small stain we'd only need a small quantity of solution. So from the video on uh, percentage solutions we can use the equations to work out that for say a 0.03% solution 
we would need three milligrams of borohydride in say 10 milliliters of water if we're preparing a fairly small volume of solution. This would be very difficult to weigh out on common weighing scales in the studio. So we may be able to weigh out 0 0.3 grams with reasonable accuracy. You can get quite small weighing scales now that will we'll do 0.1 gram accuracy. So you may be able to weigh out 0 0.3 grams fairly accurately. How, was, how would this actually help us? Well, 0 0.3 grams dissolved in 10 milliliters would give us 3%, 3% solution. We could also dissolve 0 0.3 grams in one liter, which would give us the actual required solution strength of 0.03%, but then that would make one liter of solution and we only need 10 milliliters. So do we keep one liter of solution? Do we pour it down the drain? Well, we only want to make 10 milliliters. Let's go with the way where we only end up with 10 milliliters. So a 3% solution is 100 times stronger than we need. But if the solution is well mixed, then the solute is uniformly distributed in the solution. So any portion of the solution will contain some fraction of the total solute. So one milliliter of this solution would contain 0.03 grams of borohydride, 0.3 grams in 10 milliliters. We take one milliliter of that, we're taking one tenth of the total borohydride in the liquid. So we can just use a pipette to take one milliliter of this solution. And now if we add this one milliliter of solution to another nine milliliters of water for a total volume of 10 milliliters, we now have 0 0.03 grams in 10 milliliters of water, which is now a concentration of 0.3% or 10 times the concentration we're trying to make. So we can repeat this process. Again, if the solution is well mixed, we can take one milliliter of this solution, which will now contain a smaller amount of the borohydride. One milliliter will contain 0 0.003 grams borohydride, the amount we were trying or would have liked to have been able to weigh out and we add this to the nine milliliters of water, gives us our required solution strength, 0.03%. We could, of course, made this in the single dilution step, but we would have ended up with a much larger volume of solution to either be kept or disposed of. Well, sodium borohydride doesn't keep particularly well in solution, unless you're going to be using it within a week or so of making it. It's, it's not one really to keep around. But using serial dilutions, we only end up with a total of 30 millilitres of solution to dispose of or keep. It's actually slightly less than 30 millilitres because we're taking one millilitre at a time to make other solutions. So this actual serial dilution will be demonstrated now. Welcome back to the kitchen. We're going to do the first of the demos for this video. We're going to take a 3% solution and dilute it down to a 0.03% solution, as you've just seen in the preceding slides. So here we have 10 millilitres of 0.3 grams of sodium borohydride in water. It's coloured blue, just so it shows up on the camera. And we're going to dilute this down to 0.03% as a series of sequential steps. So, first step is to take one milliliter of this solution. We'll use a pipette shown here. We'll take one milliliter of this and add it to nine milliliters of another solvent or of water. 
This will give us our first dilution, which will be 0.3%. So we take one milliliter. And that's one milliliter in the pipette. And we add it to our nine milliliters here. And I'll just rinse the pipette to make sure everything is transferred. So hopefully the first thing you can see is that the dilute solution is much more dilute. The color is almost invisible. That's our first step. So we'll give this a swirl. And now for the second dilution step, we take one milliliter of this solution and we add it to nine milliliters of water again. So we take one milliliter It's not easy to see on this pipette, but one milliliter is... And I have an air bubble, so I have to do it again. You can't have air bubbles in the pipette. If you have air bubbles, you lose the volume. So I have one milliliter now in the pipette, and I will transfer this to the second flask, to the second cylinder. Zoom out a bit so we can see this. I'm transferring until the meniscus is on the 10. And now we have 10 milliliters total volume. Give it a mix using the pipette, just to make sure everything is mixed. And now we have our much more dilute 0.03% solution. So this is an example of just doing sequential steps, sequential dilution steps. This was a fairly easy one to calculate and we just know that we needed a 1 to 100 dilution. Sometimes you might find that you need less easy dilutions. Well, sometimes these are best avoided if possible, but sometimes you can't. So we'll look at some of these and we'll come back later towards the end, the last segment of the video. This example was communicated to me privately when somebody in the studio made a solution of Paraloid B72 at 30% instead of the 3% they're intending to make. Well, first off, congratulations for getting that much to dissolve. That really must have taken some work. But can we fix this if you, if you happen to do this? Well, yeah, there are two ways. The first way, the slow, lazy way. Well, it's lazy until you come to trying to get the dry material out of the container. Is you just evaporate off the solvent. The dry paraloid will now be stuck inside the container. You can attempt to remove that, measure out the correct amount, re-dissolve. But the second way is probably more practical um, if you do not just want to waste material. Uh, we need a 10 to 1 dilution, so we'll take one part of the concentrated solution, dilute it with nine parts fresh solvent. And this will be demonstrated in the next section coming up now. In this experiment, we're going to take a 30% solution of Paraloid B72 in acetone and dilute it to a 3% solution. Again, the solutions have been colored blue just for visibility on the camera. So first off, in the measuring cylinder, we have 10 milliliters of the solution. I've already pre-transferred it as it is incredibly viscous and had to be heated up to even be able to flow. So we have our 10 millilitres. We're going to make 100 millilitres of this solution total. So if I zoom out, we'll be able to see 
the measuring cylinder in its glory. And now we're going to add to this nine parts of acetone. So I have some I measured out earlier and I will begin adding it. Well, you can see I don't quite have enough, so I'll add some more. And again, we're looking to bring this up to the 100 milliliter mark. So the last portion of solvent I will add using a pipette to get the precision. And we're looking for the bottom of the meniscus to be on the line. And that's about there. One trick we may find with this is that as the solutions mix, which will take some time, we may actually have slightly less solvent than we require and we would need to top it up again. But that will depend on as these solutions mix. Um, this would probably take several days. So the trick would be to then cover the cylinder with cling film and either pop this in an ultrasonic bath to aid the mixing or leave it somewhere warmish but not too hot so you don't get too much evaporation of the solvent and to shake it vigorously every couple of days to aid the mixing. So as mentioned earlier dilutions are easy when they are factors of two or 10 or 100. We can work these out quite easily on paper. But if you've got a stock solution, which is already concentrated, perhaps you bought it this way, you're trying to dilute some acid, you're trying to dilute some adhesive, which is pre-made, you may want to make a specific quantity of a specific dilution. And then we need to do a little bit of mathematics. We use this equation where the left hand side of the equal sign is the concentration of the stock solution multiplied by the volume of the stock solution and the right hand side is the concentration we wish to make multiplied by the volume we want to make. Usually we will want to know how much of the concentrated solution we need to use to make the amount and the concentration we want. So we can use the second equation on the slide because we want to know V1 and we know all of the other values. So let's have a worked example. We have a 15% solution and we really want to make 250 millilitres of a 2% solution instead. So we put the values we know into the equation. We know C1 it's the concentration of the solution in the bottle, 15%. We know C2, that's what we wish to make, 2%. And we know the volume we want to make, we want to make 250 millilitres. So we can put these values in. And just solving this, type it into a calculator, gives us a V1. And V1 in this case is 33.3 millilitres. So to make a 2% solution, we would take 33.3 millilitres of the 15% solution and dilute it to give a total volume of 250 millilitres with whatever solvent our material dissolves in. It may not be practical to measure out 0.3 millilitres. It depends on the accuracy of the equipment you have. So what we may do is just take 33 millilitres and end up with a solution which is going to be very slightly less than 2%, which is probably fine for our, our needs. The next demo will show how we do this. So for the last experiment, we're going to take a standard stock solution, which I have made, 
This is just sodium chloride in water, table salt in water, um, just because I needed to make a large volume and I don't have chemicals to spare. Again, it's colored blue, just for visibility on the video. And we're going to take this, which is a 15% solution, and we're going to dilute it down to a 2% solution. So this may be a supply you have in the studio that you have as a pre-made solution. You may have bought this, or you may have made this, if it's something that's difficult to dissolve, and you'll keep it as a stock solution and dilute as needed. So how we're going to do this, we will take 33 millilitres, technically 33.3 millilitres, but we'll take 33, because it's easier to measure out, and we're going to make 250 millilitres of a 2% solution in this flask. First thing first, we need to take 33 millilitres of this solution. So, we we do this. So this is a 25 millilitre measuring cylinder I'm filling up. And these solutions I'm making, these are all weight by volume solutions. So I have 15% sodium chloride as my stock solution. 15% weight to volume. So I do not have to worry about getting percentage calculations messed up. These are also the same solvent. This is water going into water, so I don't have to worry about there being a difference due to hydrogen bonding and volume change. So we'll start, we have 25 millilitres. And we want 20, 33 in total. So another 13 or 25. We are at 30 and we want 33 millilitres. So apologies for doing that off camera, just had to be able to read it myself. It's difficult to read through the viewfinder. So we have now our additional solution. So now in the large flask, we have 33 millilitres. We're now going to dilute this to a total volume of 250. So we have 33 millilitres in there we need to add 216 millilitres. So I'll start with a pre-measured out 100 millilitres, which goes in. And get as many of the drips as I can. Another 50 millilitres. That's 150 millilitres in there. We have another 50 millilitres. And we now need a total of 16 millilitres. So when this is added, this brings us up to a total volume of 250 millilitres of a 2% solution. And you can see from the color, it's much more dilute than the 15% we started with. So using the equations that are mentioned in the slides, you can calculate any dilution required, going from a more concentrated to a more dilute solution. So just to summarise, instead of trying to measure out small quantities of material, it may be better to use a bit more and dilute. 
This might not always be possible if the materials are scarce or expensive. And also just using a simple bit of mathematics can help you turn a concentrated solution into any more dilute solution. Thank you.